ordinary horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Oh, Silver, faster, boy, faster. Oh, Silver, boy. Henry Quinn quickened his long stride as he saw that the door of his law office stood partly open. His lean face wore a set expression, and his shrewd, deep-set eyes had a glint of suspicion in them. If anyone's snooping in my office, I'll fix him. I know I left that door closed. Never leave it any other way. Hmm. Kid in there. Who are you? What are you doing here? Where do you get your nerve coming in when there ain't nobody around? Oh, golly, I'll try to answer all those questions. That white horse outside yours? Yes, sir. Well, speak up. Who are you? Don't stand there gaping at me. What are you doing here? Why are you snooping? I wasn't snooping. I, I came here to see Mr. Quinn. I'm Quinn. You're looking right at me. Stop evading my questions. But I'm not... Don't fix a lie for me, neither. Been reading the papers in my desk. Well, haven't you? No, sir, I have oh, not. you young whippersnapper of a mind to tan your hide. Let me see if you stole anything. You needn't worry about that. Stand where you be. If anything is missing from my desk, I'll have the law on you. Where's that contract? I don't know anything about a contract. I came here to ask you a reasonable question. No, I won't bother you. Stand there. Don't you try to leave till I find that contract. You stole it. You stole it and are fixing to try a double cross. Turn out your pockets. My name is Dan Reed. I'm camped two miles south of town. If you want to bring the sheriff with a warrant to search me, you can do so. I'm leaving here right now and you better not try to stop me. Why, you unruly young maverick. Grown men don't talk up to me like that. Most men wouldn't bother to talk up to you. They'd knock you down and let it go at that. Give me that contract. I don't even know what contract you're talking about. Uh, now, wait. Hold on there a minute, son. Maybe I did speak up too harsh. Oh, I'm sorry to have bothered you. Thought this was a regular office, and I walked in. I found the place empty. I sat down and waited. Now I'm leaving. Now, now look. Sit down. You like sugar candy? No, thank you. I'm leaving. Oh, no, don't hold a grudge. I didn't mean to be harsh. I, I can understand how you're looking out for yourself. What'd you say your name was? Dan Reed. I told you where you could find me. Dan Reed, eh? That's a good name. Well, Danny, maybe I can make it worth your while to listen to me. I'm not interested. Mm -hmm. I don't know who sent you to get that contract, but that don't matter. The thing is... How much do you want to give it back to me? I told you I didn't have your contract. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, come now. Sure you do. 
You saw it, didn't you? Right there in the desk. Felden Construction Company was on it. That's the one. How would you like ten dollars? I gotta go. Mm. Well, they're paying you more than that, eh? All right, make it fifty dollars. Mr. Quinn, stand to one side. I'm leaving But here. you, you got... Just before you came in, a gust of wind blew a paper off your desk. I picked it up and put it under that book so it wouldn't blow off again. That's your contract. Hey. It... Oh, sure. Sure thing. Oh, Why didn't be... you speak up about this in the first place? Why didn't you? You didn't give me a chance. Did you read this? No, I, I just glanced at it. Uh, oh, Dan, listen to me. I can still give you $10. You just forget you saw this contract. How about it, huh? You give me your word that you forgot about it, eh? Uh, goodbye, Mr. Quinn. Now, hey, wait. Hold on there. Come back. Come back here. You want me to speak to you. Come back, I say. Get up, Victor. I'll stop you. I'll stop you. Hey there, Quinn. What's the fireworks all about? That young upstart. That kid riding away. That nervy little tadpole. Oh, that, that... take it easy. You're like a loco jackrabbit. Now, put that gun away. You never could use a gun. You're crazy to tote one. But that kid, he's gotten away. What'd he do? It ain't what he did, it's what he's likely to do. Someone sent him to snoop in my office. You're crazy. But... Sam, don't you call me crazy. There ain't a shrewder lawyer this side of the Panamans than I am, and you know it. I sent that kid to you. He was asking how to find Hank Frisbee, and I told him you'd know. Mm. Is that why he came to my office? I sure it is. And why didn't he ask me? Chances are you started popping off like a string of firecrackers out giving him a chance. Come on inside and sit down. We got business to talk over. Uh, maybe you're right, Sam. Maybe he didn't come here to snoop. I sure thought. Thought he'd him. come to snoop? Yeah. Kid like that? I didn't know. Thunder racing the deal we're working on is too big for a kid like that to savvy. Someone might have sent him. Who would? Who is there a suspicion anything? We've got every angle covered. No one has any reason to suspect anything, have they? Mm, no, I reckon not. All right, then. Or have you been talking too much? Me? Of course not. Quinn, if this deal misfires, I'm going to have your hide and tan it with rock salt. I got lots of money invested in this thing. Well, what about me? I paid Felton plenty to be cut on in it, didn't I? Not half what I did. You're better able to pay. What's more, you'll make more out of it. How are the deals going? Uh, they're shaping up. expect Mrs. Joyce will be here any minute. She's about ready to close the deal. Good. Hope she comes soon. I'm expecting Felden to be here. Felden, huh? I didn't know he'd come back to town. Yep, he's here expecting the machinery to arrive so he can start work. Hello there, Mr. Queen. Well, Mrs. Joyce. How do you do, ma'am? Here, Mrs. Joyce, sit down here. Take my chair. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Zebediah. Oh, the sun is hot today. Oh, it sure is. I'll bet you'll be glad to get out of here and over to Paradise Creek, won't you? Indeed, I will. My, but it seems too too good to be true. In fact, I wasn't sure the creek would be damned till I talked to Mr. Felden. Well, I told you it would be, Mrs. Joyce. Yes, I... I know, Mr. Quinn. You don't trust me, eh? Well... Ah, oh, never mind, Quinn. I can understand Mrs. Joyce wanting to be cautious. After all, all she's got's that piece of land her husband left her. I've got to be mighty careful. Yeah, sure you have. You don't want to swap your land for something that's worthless. That Paradise Creek region has always been fit for nothing but grease, wood, and gophers. But with the creek dam, so the land will be watered. Why, my sakes alive, it, it'll be just simply wonderful. Well, of course it will. And that's the reason Quinn and I wanted to get in on it. That's why we've told just a few of the people around here about the chance they got. Mr. Felden told me he was just about ready to start the building of that dam. He's looking for the machinery to arrive almost any time now. Did you come prepared to close the deal, Mrs. Joyce? Yes. You got the deed to your land here? Yes, Mr. Quinn. I brought it along. Good. We'll close the deal right now. <coughs> Hello there, Quinn. I... Oh, hello, Mrs. Joyce. Hello, Mr. Felden. Howdy, Felden. Well, I heard you was in town. You just dropped in to say we're about ready to go to work on the dam. Just in time to witness a deal. Mrs. Joyce is going to take a piece of the land at Paradise Creek. Good. Fine and dandy. It'll be a right smart move, Mrs. Joyce. A right smart move on your part. That's the way I figured, Mr. Felden. Oh, Mrs. Joyce. What? Why, Hank Frisbee. What brings you back to these parts? Why didn't you close that door, Felden? Oh, uh, see here, Mary Joyce. Is it true that you're, you're dealing with Quinn and Zeb? Why, yes, Hank. Why? You mean to say you're going to swap that fine farm of yours for a sun-baked hunk of alkali dust at Paradise Creek? But I... Oh, don't do it, Hank, at all. Don't do it. These two crooks are up to something. You watch your speech, Hank Frisbee. I know the law. I'll jail you for slander. Jail and be hanged, Henry Quinn. Zeb has always been a sharper, and so have you. But I don't know how you've hornswoggled people into swapping their good land for the worthless desert you bought for two bits an acre, but folks have been doing it. 
You skinned him. Frisbee. Now you shut up, Zeb. You're on repulsive. Hank, I know what I'm doing. Well, I'm hanged if you do, Mary. I knew, Joyce, and I ain't going to stand by and see you taken in by these two. And you, Felden. What are you in town for, anyhow? Yeah, yeah. None of your business. Now, Hank, I'll tell you why he's here and why I'm swapping land. Mr. Felden is a construction man. He's going to carry out a piece of government work and build a dam across the Paradise Creek. Is that true? Yes. That'll mean that the Paradise Creek region will be irrigated. And it'll be the most fertile piece of land around here. Mr. Quinn and Zeb own most of it, and they're letting me in on the inside so as I can get land there, too. Oh, don't do it. Please don't do it. Not yet. Wait a little while, won't you, Mary? Just for the sake of an old man who always liked your husband and wants to see you protected. Wait a little. If you want this land signed here, Mrs. Joyce, if you don't just forget the whole thing. I don't sign yet. I'll let the word get out that there's a skin game going on. Maybe a friend of mine will come here and find out the true facts. Where should I sign? You sign here. And Felden and Zeb can witness right on these lines. Mary, wait a minute. I've sent for the Lone Ranger. Oh, you have? Yeah. Either sign or forget it. He won't hold the offer open. Hank, I, I appreciate your interest, but well, I know what I'm doing. But you don't. You can't. Mary Joyce. Oh, Mary. There you are, Mr. Quinn. Fine. Oh, uh, you went and done it. Oh, if only the Lone Ranger would come and get at the true facts of this skin game. Sign here, Zeb. Right under Felden's name. Right. There. Here, Mrs. Joyce. This is the deed to your new land. Congratulations again. It won't be long and you'll be able to move to the most fertile farmland in the West. There you are. Oh, thank you. Uh, Mary, let me walk you home. Very well, Hank, but I won't hear another word against Mr. Quinn and Mr. Felden and Zeb. Well, it's too late for that now. Quinn, Zeb, did you hear what he said about the Lone Ranger? Yes, I did. I didn't like it. I wonder if that kid came from the Lone the, Ranger. The kid? What was his name? Let me see. Reed. That's it. Dan Reed. Reed? Great day. Oh, what's the matter? I heard about him in Pecos. He travels with the Lone Ranger. He does? Yes. And if the Lone Ranger gets wind of the truth... Zeb, he... I know where the camp is. The kid told me it was two miles out of town. He invited me to go there. Yeah. Well, we're going. And we'll block this lone ranger before he gets started. The lone ranger didn't suspect the plot that was hatched against him as he sat and listened to Dan's story of the incident in Quinn's office. Just what was that contract, Dan? Well, all I could see in a glance I took was that it called for the building of a dam by the Felden Construction Company. It was a government contract. I've heard that the dam was to be built. Why is that lawyer so afraid? He acted like a crazy man. First he was mad, and then he calmed down and wanted to make a deal with me. And then he got mad again. He finished by taking a couple of shots at you. Yeah, that crazy galoot. Hank Frisbee's a man I can trust. Yeah, I know. Why did Hank say there was a crooked deal in connection with that dam? Maybe you'll tell more when we see him. We'd better mount up and get to him as soon as we can. There's surely something going on, or Quinn wouldn't act as he did. I Heist think... him, you're covered. Get those hands up. The sheriff. There's Quinn. That's the boy. That's the one. Don't make a fast move. Well, matched, eh? By Thunderlaw, Quinn, you was right. The kid was acting for a more experienced crook. Sheriff, You I keep think still. That... You'll have a chance to talk in court. The charge is robbery and attempted murder. You, Reed, you robbed me of money. You two will spend ten years in jail. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue our story. Henry Quinn, his partner Zeb, and the sheriff closed in on the Lone Ranger in camp, accusing Dan of stealing from the lawyer's office. Ain't nothing you can do but take up the range of your horses and start walking back to town. Come on, Dan. I'll do as they say. I'm ready. Come on, Silver. Follow it, boy. Yeah, see, Sheriff. They know they're guilty. They ain't even arguing about it. I'll keep the drop on them and shoot at the first sign of attempted escape. Dan, think hard. Yeah? You saw that agreement. There must have been something on it that Quinn didn't want you to see. Yeah, but golly, I don't see what that could be. I didn't have much of a look at it anyway. It called for the building of a dam. Yeah, that's about all there was to it. Now, we've got to have a look at that. The contract? Yes. Where was it on Quinn's desk? Yes, sir. Now, listen to me carefully, Dan. Did you use your eyes as I've tried to teach you to do? Yes, sir. Was there a safe in the office? Yeah. Yeah, there was. A big or a small one? Mm, fairly large. Was it open? No, sir. It was closed. It might not have been locked, though. Mm, all right. Keep walking. Don't try no tricks. Dan, we'll save our tricks until we get to town. Then be ready to follow my lead. captives arrived in town, the masked man halted in front of lawyer Quinn's office. No need for you to stop here. Just keep right on to the jail. Now, one minute, Sheriff. Aren't you going to make Quinn show where the cash was and how Dan is supposed to have taken it? I've got the proof. I'll produce it at the proper time. Probably by planning it in Dan's or my pockets. Sheriff, don't make a mistake. Go on in there. He's right, Quinn. I've got to have more facts. Quinn, you must show that you were really robbed. Are you, uh... Had it in your safe, didn't you? Of course I did. The safe was unlocked? That's right. There's a safe right there. Good luck now? Yes. The sheriff will want to see the inside of the safe, the section from which the money was taken. I don't see why we got to go through all this. Lock him up. Quinn will produce evidence in court. The sheriff doesn't want to make a mistake, Zeb. Open that safe, Quinn. I'll show you where my money was, exactly where it was. Mr. Quinn, I... Uh, these are prisoners. We are busy, Mrs. Joyce. It won't take but a minute. I listened to Hank Frisbee, and, well, maybe I was a bit hasty in buying that land you're going to irrigate at Paradise Creek. The deal is closed. But Hank says it would be better to wait until I know for sure that the land will be irrigated when the dam is built. I'm busy. There you are. Safe's open, Sheriff. Uh, right there is where the cash was. That's yeah. enough. Oh, you too. Oh. Stand back. Oh, you... No, you don't, Quinn. You're covered. You'll hang for this. Put down that gun. Resist an arrest, eh? Only because you've listened to the wrong man, Sheriff. Quinn wants me out of his way. He brought you to my camp on fake charges. That boy is no thief. Oh, my jaw. Dan, have you found the contract yet? Yeah, here it is. Right on top of the papers in the safe. Here, Dan, take one of my guns. Oh, golly. Keep those men covered while I look these papers over. Sheriff, do something. Do something. Mary, go get help. Call the deputies. Tell them there's killers here. I'll go. Don't any of you make a move. I'll as soon shoot as not. You'll regret this day's work. Can you find what you want? Yes, Dan. More than I expected to find. Here, Quinn, take your papers. Back to the door, Dan. Why don't that woman hurry with some help? I have them covered now. Outside, Dan, quickly and ride north. We'll head toward the Badlands. Right. We'll get you if it's the last thing we do. Sheriff, don't go for your gun. Stand back, Quinn. Why, I'll... Yes, you what? On your way, Dan. Get those men. Stop them. Shoot them. There they go. They're getting away. Shoot, shoot. Oh, shoot. Oh, They said they was heading toward the Badlands, boys. So find out and start the search. At first, I wasn't sure that Quinn was telling me straight. Why, do you doubt me, Sheriff? Ah, oh, save your wind, Quinn. Anyhow, boys, after the way those three went into action, I'm dead sure that they've been in tight spots with the law before this. Now we want them. Like you, there'll be some handsome rewards for them. Now, let's get going. Oh, 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 oh. Melvin. You and Zeb come into the office with me. Yeah. My jaw still hurts with that masked man hit me. Mine, too. You would mind that. We've got to have a meeting. I told you what happened, Felton. You came up too late to see it. The point is, the Lone Ranger got away. Yes, thanks to the fool sheriff. He uh, saw the contract, didn't he? Yes. Yeah. But there's nothing he can do about it. All the land deals we made are legal. Take Mary Joyce, for example. She swapped her farm for the cheap land in Paradise Creek. Yes, well, it ain't our fault if it don't work out as she thought it would, is it? No, but that Lone Ranger's... He won't to... come back. 
He played right into our hands by making that escape. The sheriff will shoot him on sight now. The sheriff didn't seem to know about the Lone Ranger. I reckon he didn't. Hey, Quinn. Well, what is it, Zeb? I've been thinking it over from every angle. Well, what's the result of all that thinking? What big notions come to you? There ain't nothing to worry about. The deal's illegal. No. I know that. I made him legal. Well, if the folks around here do know what Feldman's contract with the government really says about that dam, they won't swap land with us. But them that's already swapped can't do a thing. Well, we've made a lot of deals. We've already got a nice profit on our land. If we do have to stop now, it won't matter. But I don't think we'll have to stop. The sheriff won't let that lone ranger come back here. Oh, oh, All right, Dan. This is as far as we go. Yes, sir. Told them we'd ride toward the Badlands. We didn't say how far we'd go. Now what? Well, Felden has a contract to dam the creek, and it's legal. It's a contract with the government. Felden, Quinn, and Zeb bought the arid land near the creek for practically nothing. They've shown the people in town a lot of proof that the dam is to be built. And swapped land with them. Yes, those poor victims think they'll get fine land when it's irrigated. They don't know the whole story. Are you going back and tell the people the truth? No, if we did that, Dan, those people would be able to do nothing about it. Quinn would have the better of them. Then what can we do? We'll have to beat Quinn at his own game. Uh, yes, sir. But what will happen when the dam is built? Dan, that dam is to be built to make a lake. A lake? Yes, and all the land those people are buying from Quinn will be underwater. I know the Paradise Creek region. When the creek is dammed, the lake will fill the entire valley. There won't be a foot of land that isn't underwater. That dirty crook. But he's going to regret it. Come on, Silver. In the days that followed, the machinery arrived and was hauled to Paradise Creek and set up. Digging started and the work went fast. Each day, Quinn met Felden to compare notes. It was little more than a week after the disappearance of the Lone Ranger that these two were in the lawyer's office when... How do you do? Now, which of you is Mr. Quinn? That's my name. You here to sell something? Because I'm dressed in clothes like these. Uh, well, this here is Mr. Felton. Oh, yes, the contractor. I've heard about you. How do you do? What's your business? In a way, I uh, represent the government. Uh, Come from Washington? Well, yes, but not directly from there. I've had to stop at several other places. I uh, understand you're the owner of that arid land in the Paradise Creek region, Mr. Quinn. What if I am? The records show that you bought the land a few months ago. Guess you must have learned that there was to be a lake there, huh? <laughs> well, you're a shrewd businessman, Quinn. What about it? But then, of course, if you're a friend of Felden's, I can understand how you knew about the lake and bought the land to make a profit. Profit? Now, if you'll just let me see your deeds, I'll make a note of your holdings. And uh, now, hold on. Before I show those deeds, I want to know more about your business here. Well, as you know, the Paradise Creek Dam is being built by the government to cause a lake which will serve as a reservoir. I know that. The land you own will, of course, be underwater. I'm told you own about 20,000 acres. Now, uh, if $2 an acre would... Hmm? You haven't shown me what your actual holdings are. I, uh... <laughs> we, uh... I, I'll have to get them together. I'll get them together for you. Fine. I'll be in room seven at the hotel. Just come there and ask for Mr. Regner. Regner. All right, I'll be there as soon as I get them together. Thank you. Good day. Good day, Mr. Felt. Good day. Quinn. Did you hear that, Felton? Two dollars an acre in cash money. I didn't know the government would reimburse... I've done it in other cases, but that land being so worthless and being unclaimed, I never supposed it did. Don't they'd... you see? I handled the filing of the claims in such a way that the records looked 100% right. Well, then this will be a sight better than owning a lot of farmland here and having to sell it to get our cash. Sure it will. We've got to get that land back. Leave it to me. I'll get it back. Where's that contract you showed me? It's all I'll need. For the next few hours, Quinn was on the move. I've got to see a lot of people, Mrs. Joyce. So don't take my time. Now look what I found out. There'll be a lake on that land you swapped from me. It'll be underwater. 
My sakes alive. I don't want to swindle you. I've got to get to everyone that swapped the land from me before the news gets around or someone will come gunning for me. Here's your own farm deed. Give me back the other. Well, I reckon I can't use land that's underwater. Come in here, Zeb. I need you as a witness for this. Get your deed, Mrs. Joyce. I'm an honest man, Sam. That's why I'm doing it. Huh? It sure surprises me to see you doing the right thing, Quinn. Must be you feared someone will drill you when they learn the true facts. Well, hurry up and swap back. I've got a lot of others to see. There's your ranch land back, Lefty. Now we're right where we started. Well, Mr. Quinn, thanks no end for being square about this. Quinn finally completed the last deal, then rejoined Felden, and the two men went to call on Mr. Rengar at the hotel. Come in. What? Masked. You, uh, you're the Lone Ranger. Come in. Uh, but, but where is Rigner? Clothes he wore are there on the bed. I'll leave them there, Quinn. Now, if you spell Regner backward, you'll get Ranger. But you? And if you'll think back, you'll realize I made no promise. I hinted that you'd be wealthy if you could get $2 an acre for the land you own. I see by the deeds in your hand you do own it. But you didn't a few hours ago. Why, you, you slick-talking... You still win. People will now think of you as an honest man. Why don't you stay that way? I am honest. I never broke the law. You didn't break it, Quinn. But if you ever twist it again, I'll be back. Hey, wait. I've lost money. That ain't fair. I, I paid cash. My horse is waiting outside this window, Quinn. Those who demanded cash from you were in on what I was doing. The cash you paid was used to buy those eastern clothes. Well, you may have the clothes. That makes everything square all the way around. Adios. Oh, wait. Wait. Come back here. Come back here. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.